With the announcement of Grok 4, we are starting to see a glimpse of XAI breaking into the wide market for the first time. Certainly in benchmarks, Grok 4 has been dominating other frontier models and to a large degree. Now benchmarks in and of itself don't actually reflect the usefulness of the model, so it's good to split them into two segments, manufacturer's benchmark and public benchmarks. Manufacturer's benchmarks are typically released by the manufacturer, in this case XAI, and these benchmarks are typically run in private. For example, Grok Grok 4 scored 25% without tools and 44% with tools on HLE or Humanities Lats exam, which consists of 2,500 questions that are engineered to be very difficult to answer across a wide array of subjects. Think of it like Jeopardy, but for LLMs. So for Grok 4, how you can think about the actual result is this. No tools measurement is basically its raw intelligence, in other words, how smart the model is, and the with tool measurement is how resourceful the model is. And depending on what you want to get done, you may prefer a model that's actually smart or naturally resourceful. Another worthwhile test to mention is the ARC AGI or Abstraction and Reasoning Corpus for Artificial General Intelligence. ARC AGI is recognized as the hardest benchmark that is out there where most models tend to be below 10% in score. Grok4 scored 16% on ARC AGI version 2, which is nearly double the current state of the MARD models like Claude 4 Opus. And if you're like me, by this point, some alarm bells should resound in your head because because man, is this real? Most if not all of these tests are meant to measure the model's intelligence, not how well it actually does in the real world. And frankly, intelligence is difficult to measure even for humans. So this is where we change from manufacturer's benchmarks to public benchmarks. Public benchmarks are often more real world problems or even ranking by general public to really highlight which models perform well in the non-academic world. Common public benchmarks like Chatbot Arena, which is a crowdsourced comparison of two unlabeled labeled models results and ranking what response is better. It's not the perfect way to measure it, but it certainly aims to measure the preference by the average user. Livebench is another good source where the questions get updated every month and it aims to measure the diverse set of tasks like math, coding, reasoning, and more, and Grok4 currently ranks fourth place in this leaderboard. The general wisdom is that it typically takes a few weeks after the release for the dust to settle and eventually by public adoption. And from this, we can usually see which models are leading the pack, not necessarily in how well it scores in benchmarks, but rather how many people end up using what model. Grok4 has a context window of 256,000 tokens. And if you've been watching my videos, my opinion stands that as of now, anything over 125,000 tokens is honestly more than enough for most tasks. And thanks to agentic softwares like Klein, CloudCode, and Rue, in how well it orchestrates the context window so efficiently, we certainly don't need more than 125,000 tokens, which can easily hold up to 20 files of source code. And for atomic tasks, that should be plenty for Grok4. Alongside of Grok4, XAI also released a multi-agent version of Grok4 called Grok4 Heavy. One perspective I want to share about Grok4 Heavy of how the word agent is now starting to be incorporated by these LLMs as well. Typically, we have agents that perform specialized tasks somewhere downstream by companies like Klein for coding agents, Claude Research for research use cases, and other specialized tasks like that while using the vanilla LLM out of the box. But in the future, we could certainly see flagship models being released with agents now being adopted as part of the LLM provider's offerings, just like Grok4 Heavy. Now to my final point. Every release made by these companies is a risk, similar to the card game precedent, where every time an LLM provider plays a card, they need to one-up the previous card. And playing a much higher card necessarily too fast may result in long-term disadvantages. And on the other hand, if you play a lower card after the announcement has already been made, the public will certainly be quick to demote their innovation as being behind. Up to this point, Grok models have been lagging behind other frontier models. And since the first release of Grok 1 in November, 2023, XAI has struggled to gain mass adoption by the AI community. For example, the years 2020 to 2023 has been widely dominated by OpenAI's GPT-3, 3.5, and GPT-4. And starting mid-2024, we started to see a shift in AI coding where Anthropic has been taking the lead with the 3.5 sonnet and eventually 3.7. And so far in 2025, the market is somewhere split between Gemini 2.5, GPT-4.0, and Claude 4. And now Grok 4 is an announcement is shifting the playground to find its place in the market. XAI certainly up the ante for the rest of the pack to follow. And as we anticipate for GPT-5 and Gemini 3.5 releases in the future, we can rest assured to be looking forward to how well they measure up to Grok 4.